Hey, I'm Fred Minnick, a longtime spirits critic, and I am so excited to be bringing forth the American Spirits Council of Tasters, otherwise known as the Ascots. I recruited some of the best judges in the world, and they're all right here in the United States. This is a competition that we had to execute virtually this year due to the pandemic, which had some of its own challenges. But the one reason why I wanted to create a competition is I wanted to give consumers and brands and people who are just of general interest into the spirits industry an inside look at how these work. Now, for a long time, I've been a judge in other competitions, and I've written about those competitions, and I'm so proud to have been a critic for magazines and competitions alike. But this competition is very different. We are awarding only the very best double platinum. We, after that, we've got platinum and then gold and honorable mention. Not everybody's going to win a trophy. This is a competition that the judges have uh, a lot of control over, and they are hypercritical. Now, I want you to take a look at what the judges, you know, a little bit about their processes. And we are introducing some new people into the, the game of scoring spirits. One of those is uh, Johnny Christ. Johnny was a guest on my podcast, The Fred Minnick Show. And he is the basis for the rock band Avenged Sevenfold. He's also got his own pod podcast called uh, Drinks with Johnny. In my getting to know Johnny, I learned that this man has an incredible palate. Also introducing the moderator for Reddit, uh, Take. Now, he is somebody who has been tasting spirits for a long time, but he is coming, he is coming from the consumer background, the consumer enthusiast background, and most competitions don't give people like that an opportunity. So one of my goals here with the American Spirits Council of Tasters is to find new talent and bring them forth into the world of tasting spirits and being critical of spirits. And if you think you've got what it takes, put your comment, put your name and what you do and how you like to taste in the comment section. Who knows, you might join us for next year. But in the meantime, take a look at our judges and just know they're some of the very best in the world. And you can learn a thing or two from them if you want to become a professional taster. And all those two who entered, good luck in this year's Ascots. Cheers, everybody. As Virginia Woolf uh, once wrote about judging a book, about reading a book, she said, you should always judge a book by the best of its kind. So whether I was tasting tequila or gin or bourbon or Canadian whiskey, which were among the spirits that I was trying, then I um, had just sort of a, a, almost a platonic image of, you know, what's going to, how is this one going to measure up against some of the best that I've ever tasted? And, you know, one of the tricks that us judges like to do is, well, you know, after we've been tasting spirits for a while in one sitting, because we don't wear perfumes, we make sure to not drink coffee before, or really have any foods that are really pungent or last, you know, that would stay with us. Um, but if your nose feels like it's getting a little bit tired, there is something that you can do. And this may sound kind of funny if you're following along with me at home, but you want to definitely give your sleeve a smell, you know, smell into something that's fresh. Uh, I don't have any fabric uh, detergent on my shirt today on purpose. I really believe that uh, with a professional tester, you do also have a responsibility to really uh, share your feedback based on the experience that you had uh, throughout the years um, coming across multiple samples. But at the same time, there is a lot of labor. There is a lot of uh, work uh, behind each of these distillates. And uh, we want to make sure that the distiller and everybody involved in the production and uh, they get the fair chance to be evaluated professionally. Uh, I like to imagine not just my own personal uh, proclivities, but also keep in context of the category, of the things that are happening in the category, how consumers might respond. And sometimes I also think about how my colleagues in the tasting competition might respond as well. If something from that first just quick taste pops immediately, like almost if there's a really obvious distillation flaw or a really, really prominent note of maybe something artificial or additive or something um, 
it's something that just really strikes me, especially maybe it's an extremely high ester level or something like that. Then I'll make note of it. Anything that's interesting that starts one way and ends a different way, and then just kind of can almost keep going. That's so intriguing to me in a, in a whiskey or anything like that. This is a great example so far of what I believe should be a great, good example of a note of E. On the nose, very floral. You absolutely get the fruit base. That's very, very important um, that that comes through. Sometimes if we tend to over distill things to make them smoother, we lose a little bit of that aromatic and therefore later on like flavor profile, which is what I'm trying to get. Oh yeah, I feel like even more flavor like protrudes, like it's, it's like a beautiful surprise, it's like blossom, like a flower blooming. You know, I like the viscosity of the bourbon when it's almost chewy. Um, you know, those baking spices are really resting now on the tongue. But I also have to say that what's coming through are some chocolate notes now. You know, the, the great complexity of a single barrel is when you can go kind of layer by layer. The fact that, I mean, it is 45%. So for a 90 proof, um, it kind of hits just about right on the tongue. The astringency is there without being overpowering. It's very smooth. And I really, really think this is a lovely spirit. Um, there's some really beautiful uh, rums here that give me um, a feeling of the Caribbean. I'm getting that salt. I'm getting that sea vibe. I'm definitely looking to taste and smell that special finish in it. Um, and see how that comes through. Also looking for just, you know, clean. We want to get some of the quintessential bourbon notes, but I love a whiskey that like steers a bit away from the traditional flavors that you're going to get just because it sets itself apart from what you'd be able to get just off the shelf. So I've, I've never been accused of being a fast taster. I'll, I'll openly admit that. And so will my colleagues, I think, but I am very thorough and we get paid to do a specific job and it's to obviously analyze the best we can, every single spirit to obviously pick out the, the good the good points, the good notes, and obviously the, the bad ones as well, whether it's an issue with the fermentation, to the distillation, to the cuts, to the barrels, to the blending. I think, I think the real treat in tasting through so many of, of these uh, expressions is the curiosity of them. I mean, I, how many spirits do I taste through on a weekly basis with our tasting panel here at Total Wine and more? Um, the, the thing is that most of the time when I do that, I know what I'm tasting. And uh, to me, the real curiosity is what are these whiskeys? Where, where are they? Can I, can I get them onto our shelves at Total Wine? I think there's so many that I tasted uh, today um, that I, if, if I, knew what they were, I, I would absolutely want to get them onto our shelf because I think that there's a bourbon drinker out there for them. I think we've got that bourbon drinker um, and uh, a rye drinker. Um, so I, I, the mystery for me is to find out really who wins and then how I can get them in the store. <laughs>